Edgar Allan Poe left his mark across the mid-Atlantic region, from Richmond, Virginia to Baltimore, Maryland, and Newark, Delaware. Today, you can follow in the footsteps of this dark romantic poet and storyteller, but be warned, you just might disturb his ghost. This is Morella Bell, and you're listening to the Secret Virginia Podcast, where we explore the hidden mysteries of the Old Dominion and its neighbors. Visit us at secretvirginia.com and on social media at Secret Virginia. 19th century writer Edgar Allan Poe is best known for poems like The Raven and Annabelle Lee and short stories like The Fall of the House of Usher and The Telltale Heart. Poe's birth parents were actors who died when he was a child. He was raised by foster parents in Richmond, Virginia, and attended the University of Virginia in Charlottesville, where you can still see what is traditionally regarded as his dorm room. He moved to Baltimore, Maryland as a young man, where he stayed at the home of his widowed aunt, Maria Clem, and met his future wife, the young Virginia Eliza Clem. Their narrow red brick duplex stood at number three Amity Street. Today, it is the Edgar Allan Poe House and Museum. Poe lived in this house with the Clems for approximately one year before attending West Point. After his dismissal from West Point in 1831, he returned to Baltimore and stayed with his aunt and her family until 1835. During his stay in Baltimore, Poe penned some of his lesser-known short stories and poems, including The Visionary and Serenade. Later that year, after moving to Richmond to work for the Southern Literary Messenger, 26-year-old Poe married his 13-year-old cousin, Virginia. Sadly, she died of tuberculosis at the age of 24. On December 23, 1843, Poe gave a lecture at the Newark Academy in Newark, Delaware, and spent the night at St. Patrick's Inn, which is today called the Deer Park Tavern. According to legend, upon returning to the inn, he tripped while exiting his carriage and fell in the mud. A curse upon this place, he said. All who enter shall have to return. Onlookers were so amused they carried him inside. Later, it was said Poe either wrote or was inspired to write his famous poem, The Raven, while staying there. Poe spent another week lecturing on poetry at Newark Academy in 1849, shortly before his death. Poe's tragic life has been recounted elsewhere, but to make a long story short, he died nearly penniless in a delirium on October 7, 1849, at the age of 40. He was buried in an unmarked grave in the Westminster Presbyterian Church Cemetery in Baltimore. His fans raised funds, and architect George A. Frederick designed a monument for Poe in 1871, and it was dedicated in 1875. Poe was exhumed and reburied near the front of the churchyard. In 1913, A man named Oren C. Painter placed another stone marking Poe's original burial site. In 1906, Poe fans formed the Poe Memorial Association. They salvaged bricks from the demolished Southern Literary Messenger Building to erect a shrine to Poe behind Richmond, Virginia's oldest house at 1914 East Main Street which was then a museum dedicated to colonial history. The shrine opened in 1922. Today, the oldest house in Richmond, as well as several adjacent buildings, 
How's a collection of artifacts from Poe's life, including his worldly possessions at death, his cane, vest, and even a lock of his hair? One building devoted to his childhood even contains his childhood bed. It's an impressive assortment. There is even a reading library. A gift shop takes up much of the old house where visitors can express their love of Poe by buying Poe coffee mugs, books, postcards, and even votive candles. Visitors advance from one small building to another, each devoted to a period in the author's life. There is a diverse variety of artifacts, sculpture, and art on display. Two black cats named Edgar and Pluto wander the museum grounds and sun themselves on the pavement in the garden. They are friendly, accustomed to attention from visitors. Thankfully, they'll escape the same fate as poor Pluto from Edgar Allan Poe's story, The Black Cat. The Roman cats are a part of the museum's charm, as are events like the periodic unhappy hour. Regular public readings and book talks help foster a real sense of community among Poe admirers in the Richmond area. These locations are a must-see for any fan of Poe's work, where something of his spirit still lingers. Once again, this is Marella Bell, and you're listening to The Secret Virginia Podcast. Y'all sleep tight.